Howdy folks, Mark Serbu, gun designer, gun nut, and I am an idiot. Well, just sometimes. Take for example this Mat 49 parts kit that I have. I used to have one that was way nicer than this one, but I sold it for 400 bucks about 10 years ago. And shortly thereafter, I was like, man, why did I do that? And I've been looking for one ever since. Well, one of my online gun buddies told me about an auction that was going on that had a Mat 49, and I decided that it would be mine. So I went online. <laughs> Okay, enough of that crap. So yeah, I won the auction, paid over $2,000 for this thing, but uh, yeah, you know, it could always be worse. I've got a bunch of different old machine gun parts kits, and uh, there's just no reason for me to be working on them anymore. For, you know, for my company, it doesn't make economic sense. But I try to keep my hand in it, because this is kind of what got me started, and it's interesting stuff, and uh, I'm going to take you along for the ride. I'll probably do at least a couple of videos on this, if not more. In part one today, we're just going to do an overview, just kind of look at what we got here and check out the condition, and um, that's about it. The bolt is uh, in excellent condition. You see the firing pin is nice and crisp and not worn down at all. It's got a little bit of finish wear, surface wear on it. No big deal at all. And here's you know, the trunnion and the front part of the receiver sheet metal, which obviously is all shot to hell. And the little mini handguard barrel shroud, whatever, it's kind of all beaten up. Front sight's kind of kind of beaten too. I might just heat, the, you know, do the old heat it and beat it on that, or I might just make another one. I don't know. Probably just heat it and beat it. And uh, the barrel, if you look down the bore, it looks great, but what you don't see is, and it's common on a lot of these, the A-holes went and drilled, and it's a weird drill. You can see it's kind of a step drill, because um, the, the smaller diameter, I don't know if you can see it, the smaller diameter goes all the way through and then there's the larger outer diameter uh, can you see it there yeah so what i did i cleaned that cleaned the hole up a little bit i actually ran a, a chamber reamer in there just very carefully because you know whenever you drill a hole and do another hole it puts a bunch of burrs and crap out there so i basically knocked those down with a chamber reamer didn't actually cut more of the chamber didn't didn't enlarge it any uh, and I'm going to do a really interesting thing to rescue this barrel. Normally, I would never do this because, you know, I'm not, I'm not a maniac. I know I say sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. But I'm not a maniac when it comes to this. Because you're right there at peak pressure when this is going off. But it's 9 millimeter. Peak pressure is, what, 21, 20? No, I'll look it up. 20-something thousand. Is it 35,000? I don't know. I have so many stupid numbers in my head. I can't, you know, they're getting confused. They're <laughs> just like me. So... Anyway, um, so you've got holes in the chamber right at peak pressure, but they're very small. And as you might know, force equals pressure times area. Uh, and we'll, we'll go through some of that, some of that fun math here. And uh, show you how little force is actually on um, whatever plug I put in there. focus eh, kind of is so anyway um interesting that those holes are about you know 140 thou maybe and uh yeah we'll take a look and see how much how much force there's going to be trying to knock the, the pin out i'm going to press a pin into there i'm going to ream the hole to a very you know to a known dimension and press a pin that's a couple thousandths oversized into it knock it through so it's just coming through a little bit and then I will run that chamber reamer through again and just knock the just knock the tops off of those rods that I pressed in there and then I I might weld it I might weld uh, on here and then just you know dress it with grinding sanding whatever but might not weld we'll see 
I got that out of there. And mainly because, well, I'm gonna ultimately refin refinish it and it's, uh, you know, you gotta take it all apart for that. But this is, uh, this is bent, so it needs to be bent back. Uh, interesting thing here, uh, I think it was Gun Jesus, no, maybe it was Bloke at the Range, I don't know. Somebody's v review of the Mat 49 talked about an issue they had with the sear and the ability for it to be able to go off uh, when you didn't want it to go off and uh, they fixed it. So this one actually has the uh, upgrade to it, but they're supposed to put a star on the trigger when they do that. And yet there's no star in this trigger. So that's kind of unusual. Another thing, most of them say M-A-T on there and this says M-A-C. Uh, very weird. And something really uh, interesting to me was how the, the upper attached to this lower here, these weird, uh, these weird little chamfers and uh, I'll get to that because I knew I saw that somewhere I'm like man where have I seen that and when I figured it out I was like whoa this is really weird and I will cover that and more in part two folks so yeah coming up in part two I'll show you what I do to figure out dimensions yeah, I know you can laser scan, but, uh, you know, it's it's a pain in the butt. And it's the technology has definitely come a long way, but uh, it's hard to beat just having a, a set of radius gauges and a dial caliper and, and your brain and, of course, CAD. And a lot of times I'll touch probe stuff on the CNC, and that's pretty handy. Well, that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you as always. Uh, yeah, I know. This is crazy. I just put out a video literally two days ago, and uh, here I am again. But uh, I'm just uh, trying something with the algorithm here. And uh, anyway, please comment, like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, all that great stuff. I, I do notice, like, they, they unsubscribe people, like, every video. Yeah, I know, some people themselves are unsubscribing. But I guarantee you, YouTube is uh, just not a lot, like, three or four or five here and there. And it's kind of insidious and mean and rotten, but, you know, it's YouTube.